What's going on YouTubers? This is Buddy coming back at you. Another quick video on the 65 gallon mixed reef. Now I know it's been a while since I've done a video or an update on my system and really I just have a lot going on. I've been really busy. So um, I'm kind of doing this video here, kind of an update just to kind of show you where the tank stands right now. Now the tank's still th thriving and doing well for the most part. Um, I have been kind of neglect neglectful to the tank lately and uh, you know things are going to change I'm going to kind of show you where the tank is go through everything underneath and everything kind of show you you know that I have I do have some hair algae especially in the sump I have some issues down there um, you'll see it on the back wall I have some algae on the on the back wall some of the corals aren't opening up the way they should should be um, that's kind of been an issue for the past month or so um, you know, some days they're open, some days they're not. It's just not thriving the way it should be. And that's really all my fault, really. It's all due to me just not uh, taking care of the tank the way I should should be taking care of it. Um, I haven't been testing the way I should be, so my parameters are a little out of whack. They're not too far off, but they're a little out of whack. Um, you know, I let the, just for a simple example, like the auto top off, I've forgotten to fill it a couple times, came home from work, and there's bubbles blowing inside the tank. You know, just been working a lot of hours lately trying to make money, you know. Christmas is coming. It's right here around the corner. So that's another thing. I've just been hammering the hours in at work and kind of neglecting the tank. But that's going to change. You know, I want my tank back where it should be. Um, you know, I've, this tank here, this particular one has been running for close to three years now. And, uh, you know, it's really not fair to the tank and the stuff inside the aquarium. And this is this is really a passion of mine. I absolutely love the saltwater hobby. I've done a lot of research on it, a lot of studies, um, and I've put a lot of time into it, just this tank alone. Um, I've had previous tanks, like I've discussed. I've been in the hobby for, you know, about going to be 14 years come December 14th. Um, I got my first tank when I was 18 on my 18th birthday, so... I'm going to be 32 years old here the 14th of December, so, you know, it's been quite a few years that I've been in this hobby and been doing the research, and this has been a uh, passion of mine. I absolutely love it, and I've said that in plenty of, video, plenty of videos. But like I said, I just want to do a quick update, so I'm just going to kind of talk and let you guys stare at the tank for a little bit, um, and we'll see. Maybe I'll edit it out and just add some music. We'll see how it goes, but... For the most part, I mean, a lot of the corals are still doing well, and they're opened and looking well. The fish are doing good. But you'll see, like, uh, my frog spawn hasn't been opening as much, uh, and I really think that's just due to the water water chemistry. It's a little out of whack, like I said. Um, my green star polyps haven't been opening as much. So, really, I think this the new T5 bulbs that I added, um, they're a little brighter. Um, because you know I up I just swapped out the bulbs uh, so I believe yeah they're just a little bit brighter and the corals aren't used to it and that could be part of the reason why the green star polyps aren't open at the moment but th they were doing that before I swapped out the lights so that's why I wasn't uh, associating the the brighter lights to the frog spawn because it was doing it before the green star polyps I'm associating that with the lights because they weren't doing that before I swapped out the lights um, You'll see on the other end where my softy garden is, you'll see I have two skeletons there. I had two frags that I lost due to the um, fluctuations in water chemistry. Um, let me see what else. My egg hands have been suffering a little bit. Uh, I'll show you a close-up of them. Actually, they were the one was actually dying completely, but I started feeding it again, and it seems to be somewhat recovering. I'm not out of the woodworks yet. But it does seem to be kind of recovering a little bit, we'll say. Um, you'll also see where the softy garden is. I have some frags. Well, I had a nice little SBS. Um, it was actually a bird's nest coral. You'll see that down. It's actually white. white. Uh, that died on me due to the fact that I was, you know, had the fluctuation of water chemistry and I was just neglecting the tank. Um, I had some temperature issues. Um, I had a heater that went bad. It, and you know, see the thing is that this particular time with this heater, it didn't just completely stay on. You know, it went bad as it would stay on for, you know, maybe like 45 minutes and then it would shut off for, you know, three hours and then it would come back on for, you know, an hour and a half. You know, and, uh, you know, I was getting these weird spikes because of that, that heater was doing it. And, oops, sorry guys. 
and the fact that I wasn't paying close attention to the tank the way I should have been, uh, I really don't know how long that was going on for. You know, it could have been going on for three, four weeks. Could have been going on just for a few days. But when I got to the tank, the tank was about 82 degrees, which is way higher than I normally keep my tank. So that was a huge fluctuation. My tank normally stays at 77.5 degrees. I might get a small fluctuation at night, like 77.2. And maybe during the day, um, I might get a little fluctuation of like 77.8. But roughly, you know, average is 77.5. So to have it jump up into the, you know, 80, 81 degrees or even 79 are there just those are just temperature spikes that the the system isn't used to so corals can so show signs of stress even though 79 isn't isn't bad like that's a lot of people run their tanks at you know 78 79 degrees but when you have a consistent temperature of 77 you know and you get those small little point fluctuations there and then all of a sudden you get a two degree spike that's a huge spike so that was kind of an issue there um, and that's kind of when the bird's nest started to die off on me. Uh, so when I, I corrected that the heater issue, because I have brand new heaters just laying around. I normally swap them out once a year, uh, but this one I didn't. So anyways, when by the time I noticed that issue and corrected it, that coral was already bleaching out and I was unable to save it. So that's kind of where that is on that. Um, and I just haven't taken the, the skeletons out yet, kind of dreading doing that. You know, it just kind of bums me out that that happened, and it was really, you know, human error. I should have been checking the system every day, and I would have caught that problem way sooner and would not have lost that coral, so that's really my fault. And, uh, you know, it kills me when something dies. It really does. It really it really kills me, and I, and I hate that. So uh, I was kind of devastated to have that happen. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you the sump underneath. Bear with me if the color contrast looks a little funny. Um, I have the color set right now to maximize the color inside the tank. So let's go down underneath the tank, and we'll see how the sump looks. And I also have to do something with this as well. You'll see I have uh, just a mess going on. So here's some of my test kits. Um, I always... I really like the Red Sea um, and then I have the API's I keep the API's just because they're simple and easy um, as far as like testing my calcium which I do have the calcium test kit here I will use the API test kit for uh, testing the calcium but I do have also have my Red Sea uh, test kit for calcium which uh, you know I'll compare the two results when uh, I get the time there's the Red Sea Calcium Pro test refill kit I just had to refill it because I was out. So let me uh, kind of swash some of the salt off. As you can see, I mean, just absolutely dirty. I just haven't been doing anything. I have been doing water changes now and again. All right, so you'll see all of the hair algae that has just taken over my sump. Just absolutely filthy, just taking over my sump. And the protein skimmer, I don't know if you guys are picking that up, is just just full to the max. So these are just, it's just ridiculous. The system should have never gotten this bad. Should have really never, never gotten this bad. And it's really, like I said, all my fault. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do to try to, solve this issue and I'm gonna stay on top of it this time I'm not gonna let my tank slip again you know I like I said I put too much time into it I mean we all have and we all know that life gets in the way now and again and our tanks fall off and it really sucks when it does so the first thing I'm gonna to do to, to start trying to solve this issue is I'm gonna go in here and pick out as much of the hair algae as possible um, and then I'm gonna get some Mexican turbo snails probably about three dozen and I'll throw them in here and uh, as they do their job and finally resolve the hair algae issue then I'll start pulling them out and spreading out the three dozen with you know in the up uh, tank above sorry a little tongue twister there so I'll let them clean the sump up and get the sump where it needs to be after I go in there and do my job and then I will add about two dozen I'll leave a dozen in the sump and then put the two dozen up here and let them kind of go to town up here and in the meantime while I'm doing that 
um, we have to understand that you know we're growing hair algae because I have obviously I have high phosphates in the system well it doesn't even necessarily have to be high um, phosph um, hair algae can thrive and it's like 0 0.03 parts per million phosphate levels so they can thrive fairly you know in a fairly low phosphate environment really um, I'm testing the phosphates in the system and it's showing up zero but again I'm doing that with an API test kit so you have to understand that an API test kit is not going to test phosphate levels of 0 0.03 parts per million are not going to show up so I'm getting a phosphate reading of zero but as you can see it's clear that I have phosphates in the system I don't need a test kit to show me that because if I didn't have phosphates I wouldn't have this hair algae issue so it's a really simple way to um, just know that you have phosphates regardless what your test kit says so that's just kind of where that goes now if I had a, a really good hobby grade test kit maybe like a you know a Red Sea test kit um, that probably would uh, give me the phosphate readings and give me an accurate reading of what the phosphate levels are. And they're probably, I would say they're probably between 1.03 to 1.04 parts per million because uh, I believe API, API test kits only go to like 5 parts per million or just under 5 parts per million. So it's not going to read that low of a phosphate level. So I will uh, change out the GFO and carbon and I'll, I'll add probably about a cup, cup and a half. So as I'm taking out the hair algae that is consuming some of the nitrates and phosphates out of the system, um, I could get a phosphate spike So um, because it's not going to be consuming it. It's not going to be growing the hair algae and consuming the phosphates as it's growing and eating and consuming. So me combating that with um, more GFO. I'm actually in here. This isn't GFO right now. That is, um, uh, what the heck the name is, Fosgard which um, I'm going to switch to the GFO just because I, I like GFO it lasts longer. Fosgard's really good for bringing them down in a hurry. I'm not looking to bring them down in a hurry. I'm looking to do it much more slower. So um, Fosgard, uh, GFO I think will work better for this application. So that's kind of it on that one. And I'll go through, change out all my, clean my filters and everything like my pads down in here. I'll clean those all out. I'll vacuum all this out. Um, I do have some rubble rock down here that I was saving. Uh, for the 20 gallon long that I was going to set up on the side. Um, so uh, I'll probably go in there and just dust everything with a turkey baster, make sure I'm getting any detritus that's settled at the bottom of the sump, because that could be one of the issues right down there as far as that holding detritus, getting it getting trapped in the rocks and holding the detritus down in there. And that could be part of the reason why I'm having an algae issue at the time. Could be. So we'll go in there and clean that out really well. I don't want to necessarily take those rocks out because, like I said, I am planning at some point on doing that 20-gallon uh, long, redoing that 20-gallon long, um, which I, I did a whole video on setting up a tank, and I ended up tearing it down just because it was it was up on the second floor, hug, lugging the buckets upstairs just kind of sucked. But that's a whole other video. All right, guys, so this is Buddy coming at you. Another quick video on the 65-gallon mix, mix reef. This is going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to name this video Rehab. It's time to rehab the system and get it back where it should be and get it thriving again. All right, guys, this is Buddy signing out. I want to say to everybody, have a Merry Christmas, and I'll do my next video after Christmas. All right, guys, happy reefing. Peace.